been a while, boys. Got to knock the dust off this thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this thing on? Is that a funny joke? <laughs> that was is, that a, is that a funny joke? No. Oh, shit. How's it going? How's everybody doing? Ken, how you doing? Brian, how you doing? I've been good. It's good. summer. It's summer in my world, so I'm ripping the scoot, and I got the hair blown back, and I got the shades on, and I'm I'm getting stares. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look at look at how we're dressed. We got a whole new camera set up. This is this is a pretty summery vibe. That's Brian summer. didn't get the memo, but no, this is hot. Ken and I are, we're pretty summery over here. That slack right. t-shirt's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. I got my heavy jinkos on too. That share is just sticking to your chest as it sweats. Share that hair. Graphic. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be one of those shirts that's like thirty-eight ounce cotton or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. From back yeah, in the yeah. day when that was the pound mode. and a half. Yeah. 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 Just old enough to be heavy as fuck, and uh, just young enough to be double stitched and a thick ass yeah. print. You know? you know, when you wear vintage t-shirts, you realize they did not care about breathability. But they yeah. did those 50 fifties, man. I don't, I don't know. Did. This yeah. is, this is vintage. Look at yeah. how breathable this I'm is. I'm not I sure. See through it, Brian. I'm not you convinced can see through it was that. on I can purpose see it. or if it was just like a little cheaper to make a 50 50. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. But it, I'm just saying it, it was, did, it worked it does, out. It worked out. The, whether the intent was there or not. Hey, welcome to tea time. A show that spotlights the growing and changing world of vintage, and not only the clothes themselves, but the stories and people behind them. Covering everything from reselling to sustainability, this is the ThriftCon Podcast. What are we here talking about today? What's the what's the talk about? I mean, you've named this episode Rise of the Retros. I also, I, like. I also hey. called it Retro Rally, working second working title. No, we already like did Retail Rise Rally. Of the retros. We didn't do that. Oh yeah, we didn't do that, but they we saw we we talked We've about that. Yeah. I, I I riffed off retail rally to come up with Grail Grab. All right, well we're talking about the rise of the yeah retros. rise of the retros is better. Rise of the retros is better. It's like yeah. a Star Wars type. Yeah, it's kind of sounds like a movie or it's yeah. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and what does that mean? Our audience members may ask. Um, basically, you know, I kind of brought this uh, topic to light, and it was just something that I thought. We should cover. We should touch on. We may have briefly touched on it in other episodes and topics, just like the mindful consumerism, and it, it's probably come up before, um, you know, in that Warren Lotus episode as well. But we're here to talk about the uh, just retros in general, retro uh, T-shirts, reprints, um, Nike and Jordan retro in shoes. Uh, do we like it? Are we here for it? Do we think it's a good thing, a bad thing? Do we wear them? Do we buy them? Do we stay away from it? Just all of the above. We're kind of going to get down to it, talk about our personal opinions, um, what we think, what we think you guys should think, but we can't tell you what to think. So no, we're just going to talk about it. We can't. I think there is a lot of circumstantial evidence, like people just saying, you know, brands are copying me or copying this or copying that. And it's just sort of like, you know, it's that one person's opinion. So the first thing I wanted to do when we started looking this up was like, um, you guys should probably be familiar with like the Wayback Machine when you can type in a website and look at it, you know, so many years back. I'm familiar. I went Brian, out, are you familiar with this? Yep. It's like a snapshot God, of the cool. internet. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. If you guys aren't familiar, you should, you should try it. It's fun. You could go to like, you could go surf YouTube and like YouTube in 2000, whenever it came out and it looks all funny. But anyway, I started out there to see like, okay, let me take a couple brands that we always say are doing this type of thing and just get some evidence to see if like, if they've always been doing this type of thing or not. One that really stuck out to me, and we'll put the screenshot up, but um, the H&M. So H&M, if you go to their homepage right now or about six days ago when I did this, right down in the middle, kind of like one of the first things they're doing is this is this uh, ready for summer, and they got like this film, fake film print over stuff, and it's this gradient, like very Y2K background, crochet top, which is straight up 70s, which is also 90s. And then the little uh, silver chain for your waist or for your the neck body or where, wherever yep. you're putting it. And some like frameless pink sunglasses. The Paris Hilton sunglasses. Yeah, like, straight up. Yeah. So, I mean, they're obviously trying to hit a certain vibe retro right now for some people is definitely like the Y2K. And that's definitely gaining some traction. Um, and then just for shits and giggles, I went and looked at I used kind of like the first ThriftCon 
as the baseline for some of these like way back looks. So, Summer, so 2018. Yeah, May 2018 is when I looked. And if you go to the, and we'll put it up here, but if you go there, they got this like, what would you call that? Like a boho y kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Country clubby yeah, kind of yeah. like dressed down, but dressed Free up. Free people like, Yeah. So obviously H&M is riding a certain wave and I wasn't really paying that much attention to um, 20 year old girls fashion in the summer of 2018. But apparently this must have been the wave in 2018. <laughs> and now it we're seems. talking frameless Paris Hilton glasses with the waist chain and some crochet tops. So obviously there's been a shift definitely for that brand, but we'll get into it. I saw evidence of this happening um, for, for a lot of other bigger brands too. Yeah, one for one sure. thing that when you, I really wanted to go out and get some like real deal evidence to see like these, these are, this is what's happening with like retro inspired sales and how those are like moving up and down. Very hard to do. And I probably just don't have the right Google. Google might not be the machine to do that, but yeah. in style.com, a pretty, you know, one of those big publications, they posted, you know, some, some Amazon specific summer fashion deals. And the first two things were like this faux fucking vintage shirt just completely fake but looks like some shit that you wipe grease off of your hands with when you're working on your car that you would pull out of the bins something you would literally cut into a rag and then um the levi's not vintage but vintage look mom jeans literally said in the description like 90s era mom jeans yeah so yeah it's obviously a big thing and it's not just circumstantial and it's not just in our little world this is being pushed to the top of the funnel people trying to buy stuff for for summer they're pushing you to get 90s and y2k stuff so yeah the that's, evidence uh, is there that's you know i kind of just covered a few of the the brands that are obviously just hopping in on the trend you know yeah um and h&m was absolutely one of them um you know abercrombie pack sun urban outfitters list goes on and on yeah we i mean we we probably should have just went to the mall and like <laughs> it's in, i was looked. at the mall the other day you know I, I go to the mall maybe once or twice a year to get some necessities uh-huh and uh yeah just walking through and just just yeah just, oh my they're, god they're oh my god it's, it's, now it is weird. weird it is very weird now i like getting socks at the mall i feel like there's exactly usually right. good socks good sock boxer sock underwear deals. you know what i mean yeah, yeah stuff like, you don't buy vintage yeah the macy's uh, the whatever is you need some cologne is always selling the cheap yeah cologne for sure pretzels <laughs> warm pretzels <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm upset that Malls really don't have Cinnabon anymore. I love fucking Cinnabon, dude. I would go to malls. No, we more went often to Park Meadows, no Colorado Mills, and they had a Cinnabon. Yeah, but we hit like one or two in end. Colorado. Yeah. So yeah, there's one or two Colorado Mills though. Shout out to them. They still have it. That is one of the worst malls in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> strange uh, stores. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, God, a little bit off topic. Talking about my love for Cinnabon. Okay, so where do we want to start here? Though? Better Call Saul worked at a Cinnabon at the end of his days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Well, That's I don't right. know yet, though, because have you watched this new season? No, he did. Season? But have you watched this it's new season? I've been getting into I it. I haven't yeah. started that. Uh, it's good. I haven't yeah. started this new, so don't fucking talk about it. No, I mean, it's the first know, scene of the first episode is working at a Cinnabon. I know. So we kind of approached this topic from three different lenses. There's brands that were popping in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s that are coming back from the dead and they're like, all right, it's time to drum up a little bit of money and get on the internet and try some, you know, try to get this coming back. back from the dead and, and making the same things that they the, made. Yeah. The making, 80s, you know, exact, so like, Oh, we're just going to see if this will work again. And the key thing is that, yes, it's their shit. They originally came out with it and they're not, you can't copy yourself cause you did it. Yeah. No, you just, it's, a it's yours. Yeah. So Brian, go in, stuff. bring us through a couple of these brands that uh, you might have looked up well so one that i actually continue to get ads for on instagram is the gecko hawaii wow they uh, know their uh they know their they know their, their and cl- and their customer funny base. funny that you mentioned you know they type in their demographics a little too old <laughs> yeah. for tiktok a little too young for facebook <laughs> i found him there he is, there he is. uh I, I did wear gecko initially back in the day but i will also buy some of the stuff 
now because have you it's, yet it's pretty cool. It? I haven't, but when I was looking at it, they got me with the pants. They got those jam pants that are pretty pretty fly. Well, now that you're but, talking uh, about it, you're going to get so fucking uh, I know. Just wait now, to get, you're going to get ads gonna from all of these So brands. I don't know what, what Gecko backside. is, and nobody's going to Google it. So tell us, so now, why, all, why did Gecko get you as a young beardless child so that was <laughs> what kind of defined the late 80s and early 90s it was that really bright neon loud print surf style i mean everybody that you wasn't you do know gecko hawaii like if you saw you've some, seen I'm it pull yeah it pull it up put put uh, it put it on the i don't know here. you know we'll i'm just we'll making sure we know who we're talking to and we so, establish so, but it's all like bring you back to pinks and purples yeah. and the neon greens but like look you know the, you, that gecko bro you've seen that gecko so bringing, really bringing it back to like, like that, the 80s everybody wanted there to could be, be no gecko without gecko who are. yeah that's right <laughs> everybody wanted to be from california they kind of just had this vibe that was all over commercials and and movies and things like that so when you got surf t-shirts in colorado it was like we're we're living the dream here so that was like as a young beardless boy uh yeah you gecko was gecko cool Hawaii and it was like loud and crazy shells. and yeah you had puka shells yeah. and you had just yeah. neon and it was wild hold on uh, real but quick now, i know you're saying something but uh i'm gonna cut you off there which came first beard hair or butt hair for you i think it was kind of the same time really it just came out yeah mine was definitely butt. just but. all started growing huh all at the same time just <laughs> Well, overnight just I, still, <laughs> I still i still i still haven't gotten beard hair so but we know my answer yeah, yeah. we know i mean yeah. i was a sophomore in high school with, yeah. a, with a beard so damn dude yeah. shouts out you. kids like that man it was wild sorry reel it back in my bad no that's that's fine i love to talk about myself uh As no so are. so yeah so mentioning 2018 that's when they actually relaunched and i went back in their instagram feed so april of 2018 is when they tried to relaunch and then i think the pandemic might have just got them you know skyrocketed them because everybody was going for nostalgia do we have screenshots of their instagram from the 80s no we do not <laughs> <laughs> that would have been in my space i they, believe they that. Thought you might have done your <laughs> research they weren't right, that no. active yeah. i couldn't find that on the okay. way back all right um yeah, but they, they, you know, launched using recycled images, just like you said before, like that's their stuff. It's their old IP and, the, and all these prints and, and logos and things. They didn't have to do a whole lot creatively. Mm -hmm. It's just stuff that that worked then and is working now. Mm -hmm. But like I said, they, uh, you know, these pattern pants and, and the uh, tank tops and things like that. What I don't like is that they teamed up with Riff Raff, but... <laughs> But That's he is the another. perfect <laughs> candidate for the the neons and patterns. Yeah, yeah. Like that and is I wonder the if, one. Yeah, he had something to do. What with other the neons, adult? But, what other grown person is going to like willingly wear this on a regular basis yeah. and promote the shit out of it? Like it's Riff Raff. It's like Simon Rex. You could maybe get the Paul brothers if you know you get them at the right yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. give them enough Paul money. brothers. Yeah. yeah, pre pre crypto. <laughs> yeah, Paul right. Brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's not. It's a pretty niche. You know, it's like. Yeah. Do they also wear uh, what are, pit vipers? It's like you know, if they're forty years old and yeah. wearing pit vipers, then we can market Gecko Hawaii to them too. <laughs> yeah. But I the, think it's I think it's easy to say as far as Gecko goes. We support this, right? We're down with them trying to do this. And I we, like it. We yeah. wish them the best. I don't know how well it's going to go. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. You know, I don't think they're going to have as much hold on the... Uh, well, it's I just always want to use this word. It. Does anybody know what zeitgeist, cultural zeitgeist is? Yeah. I've heard it. I think it means what's cool or the way... The that communal works. brain yeah. is working. Yeah. yeah, I don't know though if they'll have as much of a hold on the, on the well, cultural zeitgeist. Well, because I don't know zeitgeist. if they ever did. They're well, you like told a, me the gecko was it out. was a it was a thing, but it's a sure flash. It was a thing yeah. that people wore, but it was more just like it was it wasn't like this brand. I don't know. It was just like in stores. It's not like you like oh like go into like gecko dot com. Uh, you, know, you know, obviously it was before this, but like, or I'm the, like yeah, it's just like there the was like the, the gecko, gecko store. Hawaii <laughs> store. Yeah, it was more just like you well, it wasn't buy, like like no like fear. Yeah, like would, no fear. You'd go to get a no fear shirt from jc penny like you right. had to like have gecko that was kid, just like right. at department stores yeah. you know so it was kind of just a thing that like oh i'm just it's one of the five brands i can buy okay okay you know. and i don't know if you have multiple gecko in your in your closet or if you just have the one for beach day or you know party well you either party have tea. the one you either have the one but if you have multiple you are just like 
that riff guy. Raff. You're like the gecko you're guy. Riff you're raff, like yeah. wh- you're like Dele. You're wearing tons of Dele prints. Dele is, and a, this is shit. a perfect yeah. candidate for the gecko yeah, yeah. rebirth. Also, I'm I'm fully in support of it until they drop a gecko NFT and it's like (laughs) trippy, (laughs) like fractal gecko. Like, they should lean into the Geico thing. They should try to do a Geico collab and get the The Geico Geico Geico. wearing the gecko. Just saying, I heard heard big ideas around here. Yeah. All right, what's another brand that's trying to fucking come back? Uh, uh, I mean, what we're looking for. Oh, this was actually I saw this uh, last week, but Diddy. Uh, he bought back Sean John for a for measly it. seven million, and Sean John was big in the Fubu days, the uh, Mark Echo days, and it had its run, but it it just flopped afterward. And I'm trying to figure out what he's going to do with it. That's um, what I'm wondering. Are is there still like, is there a market for it? I mean, you've got so many other brands now that have attached themselves to hip hop. Does Sean John come out and? Well, that and I just don't think hip hop's in the same place. People aren't dressing no, the same. Exactly. Like, these are these are type of that like the the big like oversized like two piece velour sweatsuits yeah. and shit like that. Like that is something that people are not fucking wearing right yeah, now. Yeah, Kangol style hats and yeah, yeah. So I just like wonder. Okay, is he going to try and do the same shit? Like, is he just? Are they going to rerun all the old stuff and the old style? Or did he purchase Sean John and he's actually going to try and like make it current? I think there's two potential lanes. I think if he if he did the right style, like the big, huge pants and stuff, I think it not could necessarily work. It could work. like the original market would gravitate towards it. But like I think like white kids with painted fingernails and like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. and TikToks yeah. would. But that's not what he's TikTok. going. That's not why Diddy bought he Sean might, John. He might. That might he, he's a businessman. He might just be trying to sell clothes. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it socks. doesn't necessarily true, mean that I he's like, going right where he was. He's going to start a sock right store at a mall. Was, then he has to go like a Balenciaga direction, right? Yeah, like that. a little higher end. But know. although seven million dollars when you're a billionaire just to buy your name back is yeah. is kind of nice too. He might just he might have just wanted his name. Yeah, and <laughs> behind the scenes, he probably didn't put up any cash for it. Someone no. else probably paid yeah. for it, and it's just like I got it back. Yeah, you just said, <laughs> you know, it's a yeah. He just gave him cases of vodka. What does he have? He's got the vodka. Ciroc. Ciroc. That's right. Yeah, that's he's, what he paid. He for. was early but, on that. But that's too. one to that's one to watch out for because I, I have a feeling right he was early. He'll on try that. to come out. We will. We'll, we'll keep an eye out for sure. I'm. A, I'm gonna keep my eyes locked on that. Yeah, is he I on? Is won't. he on TikTok? <laughs> Did he on TikTok? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he fucking is, dude. I'm sure, he is. his interns are at least. No, nah, he's gotta be. We're looking. We're looking. Okay, what's another brand? As I look up Diddy's TikTok, uh, Jinko is a funny story Ooh. because uh, com- this yeah, this one's trying. all over the place. Because uh, I remember in 2015, I wrote a story about it uh, in Rooster Magazine, and it was about this Chinese company bought it you know, nameless, faceless, one of those people that are just buying up IPs and they tried to relaunch, didn't work, went to somebody else, they relaunched. People were furious about the prices. I mean, you're using 15 pounds of denim. <laughs> They're going to be expensive to make. Uh, and they were upwards of like $300 for these jeans and and you did not yeah, pay I, that. So it was called Jinko though? It was Jinko. Yeah. It was like the whole brand and they used the old, uh, old um, templates and things like that for them. And it just didn't take off, but I think it might've been just a, a wrong time, wrong yeah. place kind of a thing. Cause this was pre pandemic pre 2018, like where ThriftCon was like the vintage just wasn't at the point where it so is now. Close. Like, it, it was, was getting, so like, close. Yeah. Jinkos were definitely in memes, you know, like they, yeah. were, they were coming back pretty heavily in memes. I'd say around that time or even a year or two earlier, but 90s hadn't I feel hit yet like yeah, yeah, I feel like people really started getting weird with it these last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And fucking how we're dressed. Yeah. Let's shit. make the pants so big that the shoes aren't even. <laughs> They're in not even the there. Picture. They're not even there. <laughs> we're tripping downstairs, tripping upstairs. They're like, man, the world's about to end. I just got. I'm wearing yeah. whatever I want. They do have <laughs> a working website now, though, and you can buy stuff there. And they have you know the collectors Jinko.com? pieces. Jinko, yeah, yeah. Jinko.com. Look at this fucking cheese dick. I think he's I think he's all right. I got no beef with him. He has the beef with the fucking Photoshop though. They don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's dude. not a very good. <laughs> <laughs> they, they haven't figured out how to do hair yet. 
A hair is a hard one to. to I said I actually clip saw. Out. Yeah. Oh, so bad. They use I, photo I saw booth. the best. I saw the best hack for clipping out hair on Instagram. I'll send it to you. Oh, it's so good. I love that. It's so good. I need that. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. They're so bad at so it. So, what do we think about Jinko then? Like, are we are we on board? Is that? Yeah. Hack? Again, do it. Cool. Yeah. I'm not gonna buy it. Yeah. I mean, I'm wearing but some like, right now, but these are straight '90s, so I'm I'm good with it. And this isn't a bad outfit. Yeah, that's really not. Those don't even look that. Crazy. Jack Harlow wore that on stage like last night, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, he looks like that Jack is, Harlow. Yeah, he, he does. That is a fucking. That's dollar value, Jack Harlow. That why is dollar treat? <laughs> we'll put Harlow. this in there, but why <laughs> go back up? Why does it say lifestyle, like cult style, sure. cult and revel? Why does it say <laughs> cult in caps like that? But why does it say and then just not a word? That's revel. not a. That's not a revel. style cult they, revel. These are bad. These are that was, that's bad copy. They need some advice. I mean, two twenty five for a pair of jeans, bro. Not the worst. Right? Clothes, everything's up. Yeah, flights are seven hundred dollars. I just put paid like one hundred twenty five to fucking fill my car. Yeah, like my my gas yeah. tank up. Everything's expensive now. Eighteen dollars at Shake Shack the other day. If you, bro, oh, yeah, for sure. Nineteen dollars on a fucking cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy something, it's expensive, especially like clothing right now. Like any streetwear brand, like it's all trending to fucking lux prices. It's crazy. Lux prices are through the roof. But yeah, like hoodies are. It, it it's wild that I just like conditioned like oh yeah hundred forty dollar hoodie like yeah I yeah. want this hoodie I'm gonna buy it like. But if these the are fuck? made, what the fuck? If these are made but like yeah, they so were made in the '90s, they're gonna last until twenty one, twenty two. That's the problem. You know, though, is that I not. almost guarantee they're not. They're probably not. Yeah. yeah. Most especially. Oh not. man! But it, it really is. I'm it's down true. With it's it. it's kind of crazy how like conditioned I am to just like, look at prices for clothing and fashion. Looking at Jinko's like, oh, website. Yeah. Looking at Jinko's website, I think they're not Do you trust doing it? it right. I don't think they're doing it right. I think they should have dove more into like. I think it should be a little darker colored. I think the models are not quite right. I don't think the yeah okay okay the website I'll 100 percent agree with you. But I'm looking specifically at like these four frames and the outfits and the clothing, and I think they did a pretty good job with like the clothing themselves here. Like what you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna like buy these, these shorts so I can write it off, <laughs> and I'll test them because we're yeah. talking about it at work. Yeah, right. I'm gonna write that off. Write that shit off. I fucking, no. Let's do it. Let's run that. $90. I'll get that back from the government. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. I <laughs> That's mean. how it works. Uncle Sam sends you a check, right? Rebate in the mail? Yep. For everything you write off? Yep. Something like that. C so. Coupons for gas. Honestly, I think in general, we're good with the brands who have, net, like, if they're not leaving what they're doing and they're doing it. I think if, I think if FUBU comes back on some Balenciaga shit or Sean John comes back with some Balenciaga shit, I don't know if I'm really into that. Yeah. I don't think I just just my opinion. I don't think that that would be dope. If he really, if they really stick to what it was, I still I think that would be cool. Unless it's just objectively cool. You've you definitely I agree with that. Where I was think I was, when I was first arguing, I was on the other side of the fence. But I agree with that. I don't want to see Sean John like do some streetwear shit. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't fucking care. Don't want that. But I also don't think I fucking care if they do their velour sweatsuits either <laughs> so maybe it's just it not might, for me yeah. I'm not what the type of don't care don't care as in i support it but i don't care or i don't care because i don't like it now nah, so, uh, i guess you know I, they, they can do it they can do it diddy's got to buy gas I'll, too though uh, all right diddy you can do it he's got to fill up his tanks too so we gotta we gotta support him we gotta uh, make sure dude. he gets money the Maybach small has businesses. to be full uh, our job Supports down here is business. to make sure rich people are rich yeah so Generally, I yes. do that every day, Brian. <laughs> That's I do our, that every day. It's our jobs. Yeah. There's another part of this retro thing that's similar to the brands that are just coming back and doing their thing, but it's the brands that are coming back doing their thing, but really never left. And I would say those are like Nike, Levi's. Those jump out at me like super those big legacies yeah. forward. But I don't. What other? Can we think of any other ones that I mean, never Adidas. really left? Yeah. Vans. Yeah. V yeah. Yeah, for sure. Reebok. I got those pumps over there. They kind of. No, they kind of. I would a put little them in a back there. from the dead kind of zone. Yeah, yeah. You think you think they dipped Almost. that hard? I mean, they got sold. They got passed yeah, around. Yeah, that's and true. All that, you know. Yeah. But um, they have a name. That's about all they've got. 
Yeah, those are some good examples. Uh, the Vans one is very similar to Nike. Like they they made their shoes a while ago, and they're sticking to it. The the Nike shoes. This is just kind of just raw facts, but the the best selling shoes of all brands in the world, um, the Nike Air Force One is the number one overall, the low. And that silhouette was created in 82. So it's still 40 years later, the number one overall shoe. Um, number five overall shoe is the Air Max 97, came out in 97. Air Max 90s, uh, number seven. The Jordan 1 High is number nine. And the Jordan 13 from 97 is number 10. And that's talking about every shoe sold in the whole world. So that's five spots in the top 10. Yep. And there's there's a bunch more Nikes in there in the mix, like the fly knits and stuff like that. Um, I just didn't really feel like mentioning those. The number two overall sold shoe anywhere is the Air Max 270, which is weird because I don't know. Really? Who's oh, dude, wearing people those. hate those. I know, but they yeah, suck. it must not be a thing really in the United States, but like mm. maybe in Damn, India or something, those yeah, 270s yeah, like, are just going off. How everyone's <laughs> every like, house has three pairs. Yeah. That's, uh, every that's country's true. like cars look different. It's like the same with like shoes and shit. Like, fuck, man. That, but yeah, those oh, 270s are terrible. <laughs> when we oh, were in, when we were in France, I saw, I thought, you know, um, what, what are these? What you? The Reeboks, yeah, the Club Seventy Five. Yeah, Club C's. I thought, uh, or the Club C's. Um, I thought those would be somewhere in the list—a Reebok or a New Balance or something. But it really, it really fucking wasn't. It mm. was like Nike held it down, just Nike all the way. And a, I think Adidas snuck in there, or something like that. But, but so I think that that the, you know the purpose of giving that data is to justify a little bit the uh, these companies still producing those shoes still yeah. still making the retros because it's like these are the best shoes of all time like yeah. these are the best the best selling shoes of all time these are the silhouettes that people have always wanted to, to wear these are the people the, the silhouettes that people still want to wear that are coming back into popularity every couple of years and so why yeah i i think you know it's a no-brainer for them to continue to produce these to to do different colorways different retros to do the OG colorways, new colorways. It, it just, I think one industry that needs to take note of this shoe phenomenon is fucking cars, bro. Like why every single year do, does a model of car with the same name look completely different. I recently saw a, a Mustang on the road that looked like a CRV. It was so <laughs> yeah. fucking ugly. And I was the like, SUV why aren't Mustang? they making fucking Mustangs that look cool? Like, even the 90s Mustangs, kind of hard. They all look like, the same. They bro, all the same look colors. Like the 60s Mustangs. Like, yeah. what's so hard about that? That would be so crazy. And I mean, you got to have enough data to know. Maybe they do know that that won't work, but in my heart. I think they're slowly I trying to like get everything too. to look like a bubble that drives itself. <laughs> yeah. So nobody really has an identity anymore. Yeah. You know, it's. <laughs> The, uh, a great example is, I can't remember who it was, what what car company it was. Fuck. You know, re, uh, it was recent, and I showed it to you, and it was like a, a concept car, but it was like that black car that, it, it, and it, oh, fuck it. Like, it was, a, it was a futuristic concept car, but it looked vintage. It was like, like an a, old, like, like 80s, an old mobile like, or something. it literally looked like an old, or like, Lincoln. 80s, like, mobster, like, black car, and and the internet fucking ate it up, like went ape shit over it. Uh, and and that I think that was you know that's that's a a point for your case right there is like it's a new car. It was this new concept car, and it had all these crazy features on the inside. But it was like the aesthetics were eighties. As the eighties is fuck, and everybody like I feel like, like if crazy. Subaru collabed with Gecko. <laughs> <laughs> Subaru X Gecko, we could be onto something. The only person we don't need a in America, Sean Watherspoon Porsche. Okay, yeah, exactly. we need a Gecko Subaru. <laughs> the only household in America that would buy the Subaru Gecko collab is you and your wife. We'd have two. <laughs> we would have two. You'd have. We you. put one in the case. Uh, his and hers. Yeah. 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 You would build. You'd build an off house <laughs> and a, a detached garage just to hold those as collectors' items and just. Watch yeah. the value decrease. <laughs> Just watch it every <laughs> no year. Way, dude. 
It's like the Kith BMW, baby. That's going yeah, through the same, roof. Yeah, same thing, probably. Going yeah. through the roof. I don't know. I wonder. I bet that that's held value. I don't know. Who knows? So um, <laughs> back on the Nike thing, when I when I was going into the Wayback Machine. Um, Fucking allergies. The, the Nike homepage, like, like I said, like top of funnel, like not limited release, not anything like that. Just the thing that they're trying to sell to everybody in the world is this um, 19, is this Circus 72 collab or not collab, but Circus 72 collection, 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 collection. Um, which is, you know, Nike turned 50, the actual brand Nike. Um, it's their 50th anniversary and they're making pretty cool clothes with these. Uh, I don't really know what to call it, but a lot of the Nike logos that they're using are more definitely apparently from the seventies, but it's, it's wildly like uh, boxy and, and it's, it's a cool logo. That one right there. What is, what would you call that? Logo? It's what appears under with like the pinwheel logo. It's on like, Oh, always on like okay. The so it's tags. the Nike font it's from like, the pinwheel. Yeah. But I think it's a cool collection and it's, um, it's very cool to see. I don't think, I think they did a pretty good job and it's like, it's not limited release. It's coming soon, but they're, they're, they're pushing it super hard. I think it's all really cool. And when we talk about, you know, it's a 72 collection, it's so obviously the parts of the seventies that the nineties adopted, in my opinion, like there's a whole bunch of crossover between 90s and 70s looks, but you know they not they, like, they took the bits from the 90s that that kind of held true. The only thing that are 70s is just like this pinwheel logo and that Nike font. Like, yeah, there's really not tons of like 70s like silhouettes. No, nah. I feel like that tongue though with that open foam is, yeah, yeah, yeah. is 70s. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. you're right. They just updated. Well, I'm more looking at the clothing too. Like if we're looking at all these like pieces of clothing, it's not like seventies shit. Maybe those shorts a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But they're so they're calling it the seventy two collection. It's it's definitely seventies, but those are a lot of nineties influence. Yeah. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. But when you go back, and this may just be this is kind of hard to say because obviously you only get one 50 year anniversary to like go ahead and celebrate, but it timed out really well with this retro phenomenon that's going on. Because if you go back to May, 2018, the, you know, around the first thrift con, they were selling black athletic shorts, black sports bras, black tights, yeah. and the uh, Pegasus running shoes. That's what they were trying to push all like sportswear, running athletic stuff was their main push. And then you go a little bit further back to um, July 2015, then you see that they were like on this, I guess, kind of like popular sports, but more alternative. So they have surfing and women's soccer that they're both trying to push super hard. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting to see that they're, you know, obviously they're this Circus 72 collection is very lifestyle, leisure, stylish pieces and every you know if you go back through what they used to push in the previous years it was way more functional athletic gear and they've definitely made an obvious um intentional push towards athleisure and like wearable stuff that isn't yeah. for sports so Nike's kind of dipping in a little bit of both it's like we're gonna make it old looking but we're also gonna make it very wearable and I think that Nike is also in the boat of like, I think it's just fine for Nike to do that. And people are going to follow it no matter what they're going to, they're going to oh buy it God, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. So, um, but so, I think the true, the true, true vintage guys and girls out there probably won't go out and cop this because they know the, the, the flywheel logo and they, you know, they maybe have something that already looks like that. That's actually vintage, but the, you know, the, random person who's just walking into a nike store or like bopping around on nike.com they're gonna cop this because it looks yeah, like what they're supposed to be buying right now and yeah i guess my whole thing with the uh <clears throat> with the shoes and the retros for nike with the shoes though is just it really is they are like some of these it depends you know it's different release to re release to release but uh some of these shoes are made so poorly. It's crazy. Yeah. Like some of these retros and these release, especially quick strikes, like 
you, you, you get a pair, you hold them in your hand, and it's just like, fuck, dude. You know, even if you get them for retail, like retail is still a decent amount of money, you know? Yeah, 200 Couple, bucks. 120, 140 at least, right? Yeah. And so now you're holding these shoes in your hands, um, you know, less if it's a, an Air Force One or like something like that. But let's say you got, you know, just like, especially like the collab, like pairs, like a pair that just sticks out of my mind is the Alele Mays, like the 14s, those like Jade 14s that she tried to do that everyone was going crazy over when they did release the images. Um, they looked so tight and like it's this 14, which is a great silhouette for Jordan. It's one of the more popular ones um, and they haven't been done as much in recent years. And so it's like, cool, we're getting this this fire silhouette, this number, this 14 that we haven't gotten a ton of. It's a great colorway. It's not an OG colorway, obviously, but it's cool. It's a collab. They're trying to like mix a little bit of the new with a little bit of the old, but then you hold it in your hand and it's it was so low quality. It was unreal. The jade was like just just painted and, and you know, the the paint falls outside of where it's supposed to a ton. I saw multiple pairs and every single pair I saw same problems, same defects. It's like the whole, yeah, the whole, I mean, throw the whole fucking box of them out. Throw the whole <laughs> shipment out, dude. Like, it was just like start over, do it again. So I think, like, it's a, it's a fine line. It's sometimes we get these very, like, thoughtful releases that, that you know, they, they put effort into, they, they make with great materials, things like the Louis Air Force ones, you know, where it's like these are handmade, great materials. But then there's so uh, yeah. much of it, you Those know. Those are like untouchable. Though, right, you know? exactly, like, exactly. Why is that limited to that tiny little market? Like the, the people who couldn't afford to buy something as a collector piece. Like I bought those, um, the Hyper Royal retro things, and I never wear them because I'm like, the they did this like, treatment on the suede or whatever and that's weird and then like some of it's kind of like faded retro but then other parts of it aren't um it's a weird shoe and then just on top of that just knowing that the the hype is so high on certain jordan ones and not those specifically but like i just can't even wear them man because i'm like i don't think it didn't feel very genuine i just bought them because i could get them for retail but Th- those those shoes is a great another example in my opinion of something like they were just copying those green ones what are those called shit anyway there's a green one that like they did the same treatment on but better they like yellowed the sole yeah. yellowed parts of it and then they right. came out with the hyper royals like 18 months later and yeah just kind of not a not a great shoe in my opinion and i'm kind of bummed that i even have them so that was another that's thing. disappointing that was another thing that I was going to ask or kind of bring up in talking about Nike too. So we see them doing that a lot now. Um, and, and that's coming into the conversation. Not only are we doing retros of shoes, but we're doing like, like they had like the vintage black dunks yeah. this year, you know, where it's like a little bit faded or a little bit yellowed. And now they're, I think that's going to come into the conversation a ton. I was looking for it on Nice Kicks or, so, or just any of these sneaker websites because I know they just announced <clears throat> a pair of uh, ones that are about to come out, like some ones that are coming out this year. And it's like one of like the OG colorways, but it's like already like pre-cracked. Pre-distressed, it's like yeah. pre-cracked around the top, like the black around the the you know, the heel and everything is already like fading and everything. I think so I'm just like, do we like that? Nah, for me, that's kind of like buying pre-distressed jeans or whatever. Like it's not going to distress in the natural places. It's just going to be wherever they chose. It's a little goofy. Yeah. I I don't, I don't think that's cool. I've never bought a shirt that purposely had holes in it. I did buy a pair of pants way back that, you know, were pre-distressed and I, I had like someone was talking about them and then kind of told me their opinion. Like that's not even where, like when would that have even happened? Yeah. Like how would that have, that hole even have like shown up in your pants? And I was like, damn bro, like you're definitely right about that. And I did, I literally, he was talking to me about it. Um, it was our buddy in New York and uh, he works at, at the time he was working at like Barney's or something. He's just like a, an authority on the matter. And I really wasn't at that time and still 
still not but he told me like you know i don't like those because like that's not where the holes would have sh- would have shown up and why you know why not make your own why not wear them to death and i was like yeah you know you're definitely right you're definitely right and then eventually yeah. those types of pants you know you're putting your you're, you're putting your foot in and then you just extra rip the hole and it's like i just bought these yeah and you're already extra ripping them that's supposed that to me that's something that should happen organically it should happen because you're wearing the shit out of your shoes or they are that old and you took care of them but they look a little cracked or someone else ripped them yeah and now i'm yeah. i found them but i like the spots that they ripped them in yeah they ripped them in good spots it you just know? it's like a you know vintage tea same thing some dude bought it in the 80s and wore it every three days for the next 20 years and now you're wearing it and it's yeah. it's definitely worn out in the right places and and you know washed of course before <laughs> But yeah, so in general, if, if Nike's not going overboard with the uh, with with the distressing, I'm cool with it. Is if it has a vibe and they already owned part of that vibe, I'm cool with it. But if the distressing, I don't think so. I'm not there for that. I also yeah, get a little so bit tough. weird about like I like what you did initially, but it still kind of is like when you buy a new pair of shoes and do the distressing and do stuff like that. I don't, I'm on the fence on that one too. I don't know if where I stand on that. See, I like, I like that shit. Um, I feel you, but I, I feel you on a, it's like buying this new product and then like getting to look like that. But for me, it's a bit of like, uh, <clears throat> I'm down, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm down for anyone who buys anything and then and makes it their own yeah at that point it's just kind of like a customer right so like if you're down to like if you're buying stuff and then because for me it's just it's just a little bit you know it's just about the self-expression it's about getting something to look how you want it so you can wear it the way that you like that fits within your style and your lifestyle and however you're trying to you know portray yourself um and then also i think there's people that just you know, there's people that do it right and there's people that do it wrong. Yeah. There's, there's people that it comes out looking like mad corny. Um, there's people that absolutely fucking kill it like that. Uh, like that chef. I don't even know how to chef Huel or chef whatever his fucking name is on Instagram. Every every single thing that he or Huey, chef Huey, every single one of his that he does are just so fucking good. Like it's just like such a good aesthetic. There's another dude too that I know that does it, and he's one of the. You know, I'm not sure if he was before he did this, but now in his bio, it's you know designer for Nike footwear. Huh. And so I also think it's like those. You know, it's a it's a canvas that you can take and kind of showcase your abilities on, showcase your your style, your taste, like what you see, because it's like, you know, this is what I could do with these, with this silhouettes or with these materials. Like this is kind of what I could do with it and what I see. Yeah. I guess that's why I like, I guess it's kind of like just the intention behind it. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of someone who would do that as like a little bit of an art project and like doing it with that intention to like make it, something new, something cool that they really like and they're like putting their touch on versus someone who's just like, I've been seeing people with these old shoes and I want mine to look old too and I just kind of want to copy it. Yeah. That's a fine line too because people should be able to do whatever they want and like go ahead and do whatever you want. But the intention behind it is a little bit, I guess that's where like I don't like it coming fresh out the box like that. Like they're pre-customizing it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not really down with that. Right. And then that's just them. So that's 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 the same shit as H&M, as Paxson. That's just them seeing a trend and trying to profit off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be on trend. Yeah, seeing all the like, like small creators who that. were like doing that to their shoes and they're like, oh, that got, you know, 20,000 exactly likes. Right. Oh, okay, that exactly means we can right. sell yeah. at least 10, 10 20, 30,000 of those pairs. Yeah. Um, another one that is in the Nike realm of things, but um, is like, you know, true to their roots, I think is Levi's. Levi's, you know, number one seller for the entire time it's been a thing is has been the 501s they came out with those in the late 1800s you know and they've gone through their changes and they've redesigned it but just to make them a little bit more practical um 
I think that Levi's always does it right. The 505s, which is basically just a 501 with a zipper, those came out in 67, and those are their number two best-selling jeans. So it's like, do you want a button or do you want a zipper? And both of the, you know, it took them 100 years to come up with, with the zipper. They're yeah. like, yeah, well, I guess we'll put a zipper in there now. Um, and then the their number three is the 511, which came out in 2016, but really is just like, they were just trying to catch up with like, I guess they were trying to make their jeans a little slimmer. Um, and that was definitely a it's thing. And definitely, definitely a thing in 2016. I remember like purposely buying slimmer jeans because that was a thing. And now looking back, it's like kind of cringy. But yeah, in that 2016 <laughs> through 20. Ken's uh, 18. Long ass spider legs and skinny jeans. Yeah. <laughs> you just but, call that the warp tour years. Yeah, there. I mean, there's a time and a place for it, but yeah, it took their number three took them all the way till 2016 to come up with, yeah. and they're still just sticking by the 501s and the you know the the 505s, which are literally just has a zipper on it. Um, I'm I'm down with Levi's for pretty much most of what they do. I think it would be awesome if they made more shit in the U.S. like they used to, but it's just the there's economic barriers to do that and i guess that makes sense but um i'm always gonna try and go find vintage levi's if i'm gonna buy a new pair of jeans but i'm usually looking for levi's if i'm looking for jeans so they've been doing it right for uh, you know eventually it's going to come up on like 200 years that they've been doing it right so those 501s will never go out of style they're always going to push them and that should be no surprise to anyone well and like you said too the you know contrary to Nike, contrary to some of these other brands that we studied right at the beginning of this, you know, they, Levi's has continually pushed this retro look. They've, you know, the LVC line that we, that you, you have photos of down here. When we, when we covered our, our Levi's in our podcast, mm -hmm. the LVC line was launched, I think in the nineties or like early two thousands. And that was to replicate you know, 50s stuff and yeah. 40s stuff. And so, like, Levi's has been about the heritage from, like, that's, that, that like, heritage is what Levi's sells. It's like we, you know, we've stayed true to this. It's like, you know, it's this, it's this classic product. Mm -hmm. It's this thing that doesn't need fixing, right? It's, it's we made it right the first time, so we're going to keep selling it that way and we're going to reissue it and we're going to, you know, kind of, remind you of our heritage through these these retros and this this old releases and this lvc line um and even past the lvc line yeah like i was telling ken the other day one of the reasons that sparked this podcast is walking through a levi's store <clears throat> and right now they're pushing the, the their big line is the straight 93 so it's like these specific you know 90 it's like the 1993 look of these 501s they do come pre-distressed pre and pre like repaired wouldn't be copping on so it's like distressed and repaired and then they but then they did you know like you said they have them a little bit updated so like they have some stretch in them you know they're not as stiff as 90s pants would be shame yeah shame as fuck i think, shame I think levi's pants. is one of those companies too that they've they've basically created the story they didn't follow the story you know they came out with a pair of pants and said you, these are for the workers in the 1800s and then they're like oh this season we're going to start doing bell bottoms this season we're going to do tight jeans and you guys are going to wear it because we're levi's and yeah we're just putting them out into stores and you buy them so it's not like they're necessarily fall like falling behind they're actually creating the the trends which, which they have that advantage of or have had that advantage of at least maybe it's different now with the internet but I think one thing that's very also crucial about the Levi's fact is that, yes, they're selling pre-distressed and pre-repaired jeans, but right next to them is going to be just regular 501s. They're not going to not yeah. do the 501s sure. because something is sure. in trend. I think there's a lot of other brands that would, you know, in that season, they're only going to drop this and they're yeah. not really going to give you the option to not buy it like that if you don't want it. Yeah, they don't have that capacity to double up on it for sure so yeah um, if unless it's fitting into one of those boxes that i already said i don't like like you know pre-customized pre-distressed out of the factory not very um genuine about you know why they would have looked like that 
Levi's is all good for me. I think they're, like we said, they've been making shit like they have since the early 1800s or late 1800s, and they're just going to keep doing it. So Levi's is up there as like, I'm down. One of the with, examples. Yeah, man. with an with an asterisk next to it, like don't an fucking axe. asterisk. <laughs> don't put a, a knee hole in there for me, please. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me fall down on my own. So then, on the flip side, those other brands that are kind of making the ingenuine clothing, the the stuff that feels new when they tried to make it look and feel old, Ugh. like they just like didn't accomplish it. We all know it. We all, we all know it when we see it, see it on a regular basis a lot, you know, like, again, if you go to the mall. But so I, I just want to preface this, too. In no way are we trying to shame anybody for what you wear. If you wear reprints, if, that, if that's what you can afford, if that's what you have access to, like, who gives a shit? You know, it's a fucking T-shirt at the end of the day. It's just a piece of clothing. It doesn't say a guy. I mean, you know, what you wear does say a bit about you know, your personality, who you are, but it doesn't define you at all. It's not like, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with wearing reprints. Yeah. I would just like to preface this whole yeah, thing with yeah. saying. And super, especially if, like, you're a kid. And yeah, you're, And exactly. your parents are buying you yeah. shit, and, you know, that's what they bought you or something like that. Or you said that you like this, but your parents bought it for you, and that's what they're going to buy you. Definitely no shade If on you're that younger whatsoever. than 20, dude, like... And uh, yeah, I don't know if you're, it's, it's, it would be so tough to be like a kid going to high school these days. Like, thank God, like we were just before the whole fucking streetwear and Supreme. Like I, I started learning about Supreme and that stuff in high school, but there was one kid in our school who, who could, who like had access to it, who had money to buy that shit. And that's who I learned about it from. There was one kid who's wearing SBs and stuff like this because the rest of us, even if we learned about that and thought it was cool, there's no fucking way I could afford any of that. And there was no way I was going to convince my mother to buy that shit for yeah. me. So it's like, you know, if you're under 20, I get it, dude. Fucking go to Target, go to Old Navy, go to Urban Outfitters, go to PacSun, shop where you can and and wear what makes you feel good and like try the best as you can to, to you know, fit your style within your personality on your budget, on your parents' budget, just, you know, it's it's so different. So I just did, I did want to preface this section, my section, and kind of the whole podcast with that. Yeah, yeah. And Man, I was, I was wearing vintage clothes in high school, but, like, they weren't vintage at the time. Yeah. They are now. <laughs> so, like, 20 years later, right, they're right, pretty right. expensive now. You, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> you were wearing the... Uh, the lot tees, the the hot oh, topic tees that the, people are all now the hot selling. Topic the, yeah, the hot topic exactly. tees that sell now because now hot topic tees are lame. But again, the whole you know, closet was single stitch. Just go buy the Urban Outfitters and wait twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely an option. You know, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just keep it. If you have to shop at Urban Outfitters or Pax Hunt, just Hold fucking on to it. keep yeah. it. Yeah. All right. I think <laughs> give it twenty years. On the like the retro shit that we don't really like, but is okay for you know they're. We're going to say that we don't really like it and we're in a position where we don't have to buy it. And that's kind of like a privilege for us. Um, But for the people who know everything about it, are able to not buy it. And it it, it comes back to the intention. Like, are you purposely just trying to copy something and you're going to wear that shit one season and you bought it and you bought a fake like a, a, a reprint retro one season just to fit in this moment? I don't think that's great, but there is a f- another side to that coin, which is do whatever you want. That's fine. We're not here to tell you what to do, but there's always like intention and you have to think about how, how much do you need this? If you're just trying to fit in and you're buying it, it it's, it's one of those like, does that shirt questions. actually mean something to you or going to, yeah. you know, does that shirt have a little bit more intrinsic value to you rather than just this moment I want to wear it today. I want to wear it right now. I could see it going with this outfit once, but that's all. It's like, oh, because like that, that's, I've purchased pieces of clothing like that where I see it and I'm like, damn, that would be sick. And I, you know, it's like, you don't think it through and I wear it the one time. And after I've worn it that one time, it's like, ah, I really don't, didn't have intention of like continually wearing this, you know? And so that, that I think is a big thing about like the, the reprints with these t-shirts is there isn't. There is no intent to, there's not an intent to, to keep 
to keep that shirt for an extended period of time, to wear it multiple times, to wear the shit out of it, to really like care about that shirt and, and give it like an extended, you know, an extended life cycle. Um, a lot of the reasons they even exist is to do the complete opposite. Exactly that. right. That's the problem. That's yeah. why we don't like the reason there because they're, they're being made in these mass quantities because they know that's not the intention. Yeah, they know that there's a moment right now and they know that people can't afford the real one. They're going to give you the opportunity to do it, but like they know that it's not supposed to be around and that's kind of where we have beef with it. Yeah. Right. But if you are in a position or you don't have the, the privilege or ability or what, whatever circumstances it is that like you actually are going to wear it and it's going to become a piece of your life, go ahead. But yeah, if you're, Case in point. if you're buying into their, their, what they're selling, like, you know, just wear it while it's cool and fucking get rid of it. Nah, we don't really like that. Right. I think it's right. a, it's so. a lot easier to wear reprints if you're going to like eat spaghetti that night <laughs> or something, you know, <laughs> like if you see me walking around with my David Bowie reprint, you 100% know I'm going to have spaghetti that night. Some <laughs> crab legs. Something messy. Because um, if I spill, it's 20 bucks. Ramen, it's not 200. Dude, ramen every time. Yeah. Every don't time. Eat, don't, don't wear anything you like to eat ramen. No, Shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like splattering all over yeah, your shirt, dude. It's like Unbelievable. Unless you sell it you pre-stained. Think it's water, but it's actually just grease water. Yeah. <laughs> it's grease. <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, some of these brands and companies that we have... Uh, beef with thriftcon's got beef now uh are you know urban outfitters urban outfitters is doing it they're doing the the reprints um they've been doing it though so that is another yeah. brand that's kind of been doing the vintage thing and There's they're taxing too it's 60 dollars oh for their... it's crazy bro it's yeah. like yeah go to thriftcon and get probably get some of these shirts like at least less yeah it might not be a 1980 version, but go get yourself a 2002. See, that's yeah. a good point to bring up. Like $60. Like think of a mom or a dad buying a $60 shirt for their kid because they wanted it. And the and the other option is, you know, the $200 vintage version. Still $60 is like a little bit like crazy for a lot of for families. Kids, yeah. Or like for, for anybody, you're going to grow out of it. Like yeah. that that is crazy to put a kid in, in a position where he's where you're like telling them that this is cool and you have to get it and this is what's hot. But also, it's sixty dollars. So like now, your parents got to get you this sixty dollars shirt. Like yeah. that money wasn't around in most of our families when we were kids. Like just, a sixty? Are you kidding me? There's like, levels. Exactly. It just keeps because right now, Urban Outfitters is right now. I think positioned themselves in that. Like I said, streetwear has kind of graduated to these lux prices, and yeah. so streetwear, like the cool cool kids, are paying hundred dollars or hundred twenty dollars for a t shirt. Yeah. So now that mid level is sixty dollars, but then yeah. you even have the the low level, which will then be H and M. So, you know, if you go on H&M, type in Nirvana right now. If yeah, you type in Metallica, it's, it's, it's $18. $18. Yeah. So you can go get these cheaper shirts. Like, there's there's just levels to it. I think Urban Outfitters is a little bit of, like, a little bit, you know, more stylish, trendy, bougie scene as that. Yeah. And so they, they price their stuff a little bit up. Um, so I think there still is just levels to it in that. But, again, Urban Outfitters been doing the vintage thing. They got in trouble in 2014. They did a vintage-looking Kent State sweatshirt, Kent State University, um, where you know in 1970 there was a uh, uh, there was a, a school shooting um, on the campus in 1970. I think one, like the first, maybe. I the think so too. I think shooting, that yeah. uh, it was it, it or was that yeah. Texas? It was a protest that went bad, and it was like national the, guard. The, but it was like one of the shot. first yeah. like public shootings on a college campus. Yeah, not like right. a student. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so they put wow. this, we'll definitely put a picture of this up, but they, uh, they dropped this Kent State University sweatshirt that it was like, they said it was like bleached and like the color was bleeding through, <laughs> but it was like pink and white and just literally looks like there's blood stains on it, like splattered with blood stains. And it's unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable that they fucking green lighted this and put this out. But so it went up. And there's a screenshot of it here on their fucking website for $129. Oh, my God. $129. And That's then, Urban? Yeah. And then someone bought it and uh, and listed it right immediately because it got taken down so fast. They put it up on eBay for five fifty. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, damn. So someone around there has at least one of the Kent State bloody 
Urban Outfitters crew necks, which Man, I think has to be pretty I get, legendary. I get, clothing now. I get the cold cool. sweats. Yeah, I get the cold sick. sweats when I forget like a comma in a social media post to my 25 people Dude. that actually pay attention. Can you imagine unleashing this thing and then just watching the media <laughs> just pop these headlines? Oh, it was up. everywhere too. Like, Time it, Magazine, yeah. Washington Post, like LA Times, like any any bit, like, big publication wrote about this sweatshirt. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was, type of shit, like oversight happens every month. Like yeah. I want to, I want to no, bring it up. So that's what time said. So time magazine had a whole article about it. Like, like the day after was like why urban outfitters is going to keep pissing people off. Oh yeah. It was like, this is a tactic. This was oh. not, that, oh, that, that yeah. was their argument. It was like, this is, you know, millennia, you know, they, they, cause the urban outfitters, they did a few shirts that had pissed people off. They had one that just said like, eat less. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um, so wow. bold <laughs> yeah hey, that might be um, the trick for some people they had, just, uh, <laughs> they had oh i can't remember there was, a, there was another one too dude there was another one Jeez. too but so they like they had it, around this time they were kind of trying to stay in the con the, the conversation with some controversy I think. yeah i mean i guess you'll never get the honest answer from any of these companies but i think this this example that i saw yeah, on dude. twitter the other day i i hope it was just true oversight but it's a company called ginger and they made this like bus stop ad where all the letters were kind of jumbled up and those letters spell a different word that's a really bad word <laughs> right. a really 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 bad word on my unbelievable and it went crazy i'm like i'm like what the fuck, dude? Like, <laughs> who did this? How did you think? Eh, it was, it was, it's, it was crazy, bro. Like, it, yeah, no good. Hope, like, just hope and pray that that was just genuine oversight too. But like, how could you justify that as some sort as a of marketing tactic? Yeah, it that's, better not have been. But oh, like, that's this wild. one, they they put out this shirt that had like an identical emblem. That was right here. That was the star that Jews had to wear in Nazi Germany. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? Unbelievable. And, I feel and like, Zara did that, too. You know, Zara did one of those, too. 2014 was like peak BuzzFeed area, though. You had to just do stupid <laughs> stuff to get in the media. And that might have worked for a while until people started canceling entire companies and stuff. So, as, so this is maybe, uh, maybe so it this won't is, happen uh, now. So this is honestly so these these are the reasons, right? Yeah, it's because these companies are either completely tone deaf, they're not do they have no intention behind these products, or they're intently kind of poking the fire a little bit. Yeah, you know, and so or or they're just jumping on the wave. They're just yeah. riding a wave that a bunch of like Ken had said earlier that a bunch of small creators that a bunch of small time people and influencers that real people have kind of gravitated towards and are you know making their own little world for it's these companies that are just coming in and taking a bite out of that yeah so let's recap because our opinions matter so much and are so valid and useful to the world <laughs> um brands that come back from the dead generally pretty cool we're down with that like unless them. they switch it up and then it's it might be a little weird like all oh, right i don't know why you're doing that kind of think it's gonna suck sorry i guess you know that kind of deal like if it's the same it's cool because it's their property right. if it's different it's kind of like oh, all right good luck i guess we but could we could have been left with that yeah could have just yeah you could have not it's almost that. like uh when a uh like a tv show runs for like like trailer park boys should have stopped at season seven yeah maybe eight <laughs> but 12 nine through 12 <laughs> You're just damaging the legacy. Yeah. 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 Like we're all still watching and paying attention because, you know, it's there, but you didn't do yourself any favors. Yeah. True. Okay. And then we got the brands that have kind of always been retro, but like to double down on it. And we're cool with that as long as it's authentic or it feels right. And then on the authentic note, if they're like pre-customizing, pre-distressing, pre-screwing it up, it's kind of lame. Like, Especially bringing it back to at like, least let me do it. That's, at least let's let yeah. we got do it. to. And especially bringing it back to like the families or kids buying it. Like, just fucking give that kid his pair of pants and let him just destroy them. Yeah, you like, gotta don't give him. You gotta run from the cops the and jump over a few fences. Yeah, to you got Yeah, you gotta or get the holes if, yourself. If he's going through a punk phrase, yeah. he's just gonna cut the jeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let him cut them. Cut them up, man. Cut them up. Cut them up. Cut them up. Again, again. Do it yourself. The DIY shit, I'm good with, but don't cut them for me. 
don't cut them for you. And they just, yeah, just don't. And, and so then, then the, the brands at the end, um, you know, we Urban Outfitters, there's Abercrombie. Fuck, Abercrombie's trying to come back right now. <laughs> but like, they're like doing like a comeback thing, but riding the vintage wave. Like selling, like if you look at this, this is on Abercrombie right now, $40 like vintage basketball t-shirts that are like big prints, like, it's wild. They're doing seventy dollars crew necks. Um, so they when why, why would they do the Brooklyn Nets as a vintage shirt? <laughs> right. Exactly. Why would they do exactly. that? Exactly. Unbelievable. Weird. Um, and but I just, they, it's like I, the when vintage I hear print. Abercrombie, it's on a faded black t shirt. Yeah. I hate it. I don't I think it. basketball. Or yeah, when Golden I hear State Warriors. Same thing. Yeah, where'd they start out? They were same thing. Dude. Where did the Warriors it's not always been Golden State, right? Uh mm, I mean, it's definitely not that been those logos. That's what I was going to say. Because I yeah. know, I know, Jay Z brought the Nets to BK, and it's, <laughs> and it's only been recently it's only, that yeah, a couple that. years. <laughs> but so again, to get back to it, the the brands like the H and M, like the Urban Outfitters, like the Abercrombie, we don't appreciate the fact that they're kind of just trying to ride this uh, wave of vintage popularity. The the shirts, the pieces that they're putting out, don't seem very genuine. And they're mass produced because they know there's no intent to keep these shirts around for a long time. They're not, if they, if there was, they wouldn't have made so many of them. Yeah. Um, so that's the reasons we don't like it. But also, you know, if you're in a position where that's what you can buy to, to rep the things that you want to rep, to wear what you want to wear, then that's fine. I have a 12 year old niece who wants to wear Nirvana shirts and I'm not going to buy her an $800 t-shirt. Yeah. Hell no. Mm -hmm. right? no. Hell so no. If she's getting a Nirvana shirt, she's getting a cheap one from ThriftCon, or I might pull up on H and M baby. Yeah. Cause, she's, one. Cause she's only, she's only going to like it <laughs> Come for on, six dude. more months. Yeah. She thinks Nirvana's cool right now. Cause she's gone to ThriftCon for a couple years or like, I don't even know why, but again, like you said, she might like, if you like Nirvana in 10 years, I'll get you, I'll get you a t-shirt maybe. You can find them but too. Uh, my right my now, daughter's in right an emo now. phase. I found her all the Panic at the Disco from the thrift store, two three yeah, bucks. Dude. Yeah, she rips them up, she shreds them, whatever. Exactly. That's the other. She's thing not going to do that like, with a two hundred dollars shirt. Yeah, yeah, no, she's about to get ass beat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to take that shit. <laughs> so, moral of the story: retros yeah. can be fine. They can be good. It's kind of just a case by case basis. Did you do it right? What was the intent? Um, and then the bigger, bigger moral of the story is just wear whatever the fuck you want. Wear what you like. Wear what makes you feel good. Wear what you can afford. Don't dress outside of your means. Mm -hmm. um, that that's that's really what I think should be the biggest takeaway from this. Yeah. So really, not a super hot take. Um, yeah. We're not saying that you can only buy vintage stuff. We don't give a shit. We don't give a shit. Which some people might have thought it was going to be like, oh, dude, retros are so bad. Like, but you know, like I I won't. I, again, like Ken said, we're in the position. I won't really rock a, re a reprint T-shirt. But I, there are some things. Like the other day, I was wearing these fucking those Zara shorts. That uh, that I got, and they're like the is they look like Isimiyaki shorts, which I have a couple pairs of like real Isimiyaki pants, but those are so fucking expensive. I can't have just ten of those pieces in my closet. Spaghetti it's like several thousand dollars. Yeah, so I get ramen these soup. <laughs> this pair of shorts and 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 Zachy's like, damn dude, those are those shorts are sick, bro. Those Issy, and I'm just like, no, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> but like people think they fucking are. If you if you wear it with that confidence, it's like that's the type of shit that you normally wear any of that like you can sprinkle some of those pieces in here man you don't have to fucking spend thousands of dollars every time you put some shit on yeah, yeah. so really we're just a big old bundle of contradictions but like <laughs> <laughs> like the only thing we're not contradicting ourselves on is just wear what you want and when you buy something wear it with intention buy it with intention and if you have kids buy them the cheapest shit you possibly can <laughs> yeah, true dude. true because they For have real. to they have to know they have to know yeah. Yeah. What it's like walking pay less shoes on in gym class in argument. <laughs> Pre destroy their shoes so they know what it feels like <laughs> yeah. to have shitty shoes. All right. But at least like make, make sure they have deodorant, though. You don't want them to be the smelly kid in class. They ain't going to wear it. Yeah, nah. Yeah, deodorant. You can be. buy it for them. You can lead a horse to water. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian knows way more than Brian, we know. We're speculating. You Brian lived. actually has yeah. lived this, okay? So. You can lead that horse to water, but he's lived it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah. Bye-bye. Done.